Welcome to Harvest 2022. All right, Andrew? Woo! Welcome back to Southern Iowa. Hey, will you go hit that battery box? I'll put the battery cover back on. Andrew and I, this morning, we got my dad going. He's gonna be using the 9670 uh, cutting beans. Now granted, obviously, harvest has been happening. I've been trying to get harvest vlogs kind of going. Andrew, I think they're gonna try and pick something today. You know what I did for the first day of harvest? You put a new hat on. I wore my new hat. You got a new hat right there. Everybody, welcome back to good old Southern Iowa. There you go. Um, we are going to do harvest vlog today. We've been actually trying to do a harvest vlog. We've got somewhere around 150 acres of corn out and uh, yesterday was the first day of soybeans. Things have been an absolute mess. I'll catch you guys up on that stuff as we go. We actually have somewhere around 30, 35% of the beans out. I don't know, on like 150 acres of corn or something like that. So dad's gonna be cutting beans today. I'm gonna go shell some corn. Uh, but this thing hasn't been blown off since uh, oat harvest actually. And it needed soil change, so I, I, I changed the soil today. So the first thing that happened during harvest, well, I, I, I forget, I think I was still Pretty sure I was still working on the bin site there, getting it ready to go, getting ready from the build the bin. Dad started harvesting corn there at what we call the lake farm, and uh, we were taking corn to a dryer. Uh, and well, here, here's kind of what happened. Dad actually did an upgrade in this year. We had the sweep that we had to carry in here. GSI's uh, new sweep that they got right here was it's just good stuff. So. He ended up throwing one of these into this dryer bin with a vertical unload here so that if we want to dry a batch of corn and unload it, we can do it pretty quickly. So, since we can't haul wet corn to Cargill today, we're gonna load a dryer bin and uh, dry a batch of corn. That kind of feels like you're getting hailed on. Yeah, that's about right. I like to keep it so it's just bubbling, a little bubble back. Yeah, except for there was a dead bird in there and I ran in there to get it, so there wasn't a dead bird in there. By the way, I don't know if you can drive the feeder bill today. Oh, she stinks? <laughs> Andrew's referring to the whole gagging with the mice thing. Oh, oh man. Oil bath. Oh, there was a mouse or something in there, Steve. There's multiple mice in that bad boy. Oh, 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 that's, oh, I might be here, hold on. It's not the smell that, to clarify, it is not the smell that got me. Yeah, the smell's bad, but I can deal with that smell. It was the visual of knowing what it is that gets to me. The band is pretty well infatuated with me. But he needs to learn some anatomy lessons because uh, Lola May's in heat and he can smell Lola May on me. He's been on vacation at Wayne's and uh, he's trying to help who he thinks smells like that out. But it, 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 don't, it don't work so good here, bud. It don't work so good. Everybody needs a blue healer. Okay. Well, that kicked on. I don't hear any, don't have any belt squeaking. Okay, stirators are on. There. Uh-oh. Why you no go? We tripped. It's not good.
Oh. You always like seeing a little moisture in your electrical box. Yeah. That's quite a problem when you got wet corn. That's quite the problem. So yeah, that was a little bit of an issue. And this here might be the worst corn I've ever shelled in my entire life. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's light too. It's gonna be probably not gonna be very good test weight. And the boot is wet, so that's good. All three things, low test weight, low yields, high moisture. That's what we like to find, all right? After that, we actually uh, had a little bit of an issue with the Macdon. I'll, I'll let you guys watch that. The belt just came off of where it's supposed to be. I don't know how that happened, but it did. So I gotta go check that out. Spread it up there. There she goes take much work on Sunday fix on Monday is true here guys yeah. part of me wonders if we should have tried to tie that other belt onto that one <laughs> too late Keep it going. Got about three feet to go. Keep it, what do you mean? Just roll it to that edge so that I can see and help Andrew up top. And this track. There's three. Well, we're stuck again. We can. Where you at? About four inches from the roller. I think, I think Hold on. Okay, go ahead one more time. All right. That's pretty good right there. It looks good under here. Well, the MacDon's fixed that it like ripped itself where the tabs go together, peeled one of those back, ripped it off. We got it back together. Could have been a bigger job than it ended up being. Heck yeah, boys. No line of car gale this morning. supposed to call in and tell them who it is well actually you can radio in but this thing here yeah that's that's just a novelty art item up there so I just got to call on my cell phone okay I think see where you put 18.2 I think you missed type 15 <laughs> That gal that's at the tells you where your grade it is. I think she's kind of new. I made her a little nervous this morning. But time to head back to uh, the field. I, there's a few things going on this morning, and I actually that was a contracted load, which I did a little bit something different, and, and I'll explain that when we get to the field here. And 
Andrew should be on his way to rescue me because uh, my dually's broke. So it's been doing this weird deal where uh, it like low idles in the morning. Uh, so you guys want to see something not fun? Uh, I need to change my engine oil, but my truck low idles in the morning. It's not because of the engine oil thing. I thought it might have been a fuel filter thing. Um, not a fuel filter thing because I changed the fuel filter. Then once it starts in the morning, it runs fine the rest of the day, but she's sick. Needs to go to the shop. My voltage is really low. wonder if one of the alternators is going out. Come on! Just needed a word of encouragement. Lifesavers for breakfast too. And my voltage is low, so I think I thought that either I had a bad battery or a battery going out that or I had an alternator going out uh, this morning. We shucked the serpentine belt, I believe is what you call it. And oh, that's a interesting development right there. That thing is completely loose. Yeah. I don't think your alternator is supposed to be loose. 12.29. Yeah, I, I think that <laughs> might be an issue there. <laughs> something break? I have no clue. Something but, had to break. Something, yeah, it broke a bolt or something, but like the belt, I think, is in one piece. I don't know if I can get it out of there or not. Does this have an electric fan now? It charged fine. But you know, I don't know, like you said, this thing's got two alternators, so it's like, could one of them be carrying it or not? That battery over there had 12.32 volts on it. This one had 12.29. So if this happens to be your first time here for a video, I probably ought to reintroduce some people. Is that I'm Ben, this is Andrew. Andrew works for my dad. And then the guy that you see wandering around Every now and then in the videos is my dad Scott. So, oh, and then <laughs> Bandit, and then the the older gentleman that you'll see every now and then he's uh, he's Wayne. So, you stink, dog. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you smell horrible. Yes, please get closer to me. Anyways, what I was saying there at Cargill this morning is that something I did different to contract this year. And I'm gonna explain this in as simple of terms as possible because I wish somebody explained it in a lot simpler terms for me, is that I did some HTAs, which I believe stands for hedge to arrive. And what that basically means is, is that we used to sell or contract corn at a delivery uh, period, basically. So what that means is that you would sell it for, say the first half of November, and then you could sell that corn in July and then you have to deliver that corn in the first two weeks of November and the price is set. So you deliver a thousand bushels, you already know what you're gonna get paid on that thousand bushels. The issue with that is that it would basically time constrain us to uh, that delivery period. And so if a field of corn was ready to go, we either have to take it to a bin or we couldn't pick it because that was a dad and I field and we did not ready. For the contracts it actually limited where and when we could harvest corn and tell me if i'm not making sense because if you can understand it too then i now maybe everybody can understand it what we did differently this year or i tried to do differently is i did some hedge to arrives so that means that you set the price of the corn on the futures which means that what they would theoretically pay just like you were contracting the corn for the first half of November. The only difference is, is that the basis is not set. So if you give it for December, so you do a, a HTA contract for December, like Cargill would charge me either two or three cents to do that. 
uh, just off the price of it just to have a HTA. I'm hoping that makes sense. But what that does is that that opens up my delivery window to any time before December. So I just have to call, open up, set the basis, which a uh, few loads ago or that we did, actually the basis was 15 over. And uh, the load I took this morning, the basis was five under, but that's where the basis gets set. And then you can deliver it basically any time that the, the it, works for you. it works for us. And the field that we go into, things like that. So it's just kind of a harvest tool that yeah, it costs you three cents to do that, but it's, or two or three cents to do that. But I think that that's way, way worth it to be able to deliver corn when you want to deliver corn. And not only that, you can also roll the HTA so you don't even have to deliver it in December. Like if the basis looks really good to deliver it in February, you could then hold on and deliver it in February or Christmas time comes around and you don't want to haul it, things like that. But I haven't gotten to that. I just use the HTAs to basically sell a little bit of corn that for cash flow issues, storage issues, whatever you need to do, and not specifically tell them when you're going to deliver that. That's worked really well for us this year so far. So if it costs you two or three cents a bushel to do that, that's what, $20 a loop? Twenty dollars a load, yeah. So 20 30 bucks a load. Cheap. Pretty cheap. Yep. But since that truck's broke, we had to go get the old ram. Had to run over here real fast. Chris is back. Uh wiring up the wet bin there. We just stopped to make sure that his plans and my plans were the same plans that uh everything should go good for wiring up that bin and where to put uh basically some like lights for the future and security wise plus since we're over here i'm gonna stop and say hi to wayne since i haven't seen him in well i guess i saw him yesterday when we get to harvest it feels like i don't see him as much because i see him maybe once a day versus like during the summer i see him multiple times during the day and i would say i should catch you up on uh, where we're at with harvest but it appears that i have broken a shear bolt on the unload system here and uh i was thinking we could go harvest some corn because i've harvested a little bit here and when i came over to unload it and if you know anything about these sts's they, they make this very distinct a sound you guys like that as the corn comes out and it, it, it no made that sound when uh when i went to unload it da -da -da. Okay, did that fix you? <laughs> and just go to figure. Sounds like the 9670's busted. Ready for that sound? Told you. Dad thinks he broke a shaft on the chopper. That sounds fun. Cargill closes today. And then they're doing like their maintenance deal and I think this corn's just a little too wet for the bin. So he's probably gonna come get the 9660. And uh, it'll go to beans. What you looking for? What you looking for? What you looking for? What you looking for, huh? You looking for something? No way. Two times in one day? Maybe I am the prettiest girl at the dance. Sounds like the straw choppers busted up on the 9670. They got it in the deer already. 
Uh, then they went and grabbed the 9660 when I was uh, at Cargill and they got it over here. But it's sprinkling now, so we're going to move some stuff around and we're going to go uh, try and get my truck out of that field. I think I'm going to trailer it. It's, uh, that's about the wisest thing to do. But first we're going to go see if we can pull the Mac Don with this 1500. Ah, laziness. <laughs> oh, that's open. Just drive on up to the side of your truck. <laughs> Hit the close button. <laughs> Electric tarps. Good and bad. Good and bad. Come on, old girl. Oh, yeah. Okay, time to go get the tile truck to go uh, rescue my dually. If you don't know why I call this the tile truck, I impulse bought this off of Facebook Marketplace this winter to turn like this rig that has a ton of storage absolutely everywhere. And uh, actually, Bandy, get out of the ditch. And I actually came with this trailer here. Pickens, uh, got shelves and stuff in it i did a whole video on it i'll link it there in case you're wondering what this is not sure if uh if it'll end up staying around or not it'll depend on how uh how it does with the tiling and stuff the one thing i'm a little worried about is this thing is heavy and it's two-wheel drive but I, um, I don't know i can move stuff with it see cat motor but she starts good This thing's probably been sitting here for, I don't know, a while. I actually think I'm going to try and haul the cable dozer on that. So that might be a video. Maybe it's a video that's already out. Who knows how these videos go nowadays. Everything's all over the place. And we actually, hey, well, actually, we actually just missed Chris. Um, he's got things mainly wired out and apparently we're terminated in there. So the power company's gotta come out and give me power. Big old box right here. Uh, put one, two, three, four lights on there. I think that they'll, they'll probably all become like stay on all the time, uh, dawn the dust type deal. Uh, plus, That'll provide a lot of light in this area. I don't know where we'll unload this bin, but for future plans, which will be a video, an unloading system could go there and you'd want to have as much light in this area. It's really nice to have a lot of light around your grain bins. He's still got some more work to do, so we'll catch up on that a little later. Let's, uh, let's go rescue a dually. <laughs> Well, I don't know where this is going to end up, but I'd say that's enough for the first harvest of log mass. If you guys haven't yet subscribed to the channel, we sure appreciate you joining us this fall. See what we can get done. See what kind of trouble we can catch into. Uh, hit the thumbs up button on the way out. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. It doesn't look like we're gonna have a hard time keeping up here today because I don't know which way the videos came out, but the Kinsey cart's broken right now, so we actually don't have a grain cart. Um, so Dad's just shuttling it up to the front. We got three trucks and trailers to be running with today. So I'm gonna take a second and uh, make some lunch. Oop, I got my finger. Here you go, young man. Thank you. Tomato sandwich. My tomatoes didn't grow at all like this year. So, neighbor gave me some tomatoes so I can have some tomato sandwiches for lunch.
Oh yeah. Ah, my finger. Just kidding, bud.